morning, friends. It's good to have you with me this morning. I pray that you're doing well, and I pray that this message today, which I feel is so important for every Christian to hear, to understand, to comprehend, and to put this into practice, is absolutely essential in the day and the time that we live. Uh, very important message today, so I want to get right into it. And if you have your Bibles, if you would turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter 12. And I'm going to be reading verses 1 and 2. Verses 1 and 2. And I'm going to read from several different versions this morning. And I want to break down uh, one particular word in here from the Greek. So you can fully comprehend and understand what the Apostle Paul uh, as he was being inspired by the Holy Spirit trying to communicate to Christians and fellow believers from his time to this time. And it's absolutely essential that we understand this. So I'm going to start reading from the New King James Version first. And the Word of God says this, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Friends, in the day and the age that you and I live in right now, there's a battle, a spiritual battle going on, and I have discussed this numerous times uh, over the last year, a uh, little over a year. The enemy of our souls, the devil, Satan, the deceiver, is doing everything he can to kill, steal, and destroy everyone's life. He's trying to destroy God's plan for man. He's trying to do everything he can. He is constantly finding and trying to find ways to get into your life and to disrupt it and to destroy you. And you have got to realize that you have an enemy in this world. You may be that person that says, I love everyone, I have no enemies. And that may be true to a degree. But yes, you definitely have an enemy in Satan. And his sole purpose, if you name the name of Jesus, if you claim to be born again, saved, child of God, then you have an enemy. And you have more than one enemy. Uh, but the, the chief enemy of your soul is the devil. And he's going to try to do everything he can to disrupt your life and cause mayhem and destruction. And we have got to realize that. And it comes in many different forms. It comes in many different directions. Um, and he is going to continue until literally uh, when Jesus comes back and takes him and throws him into uh, hell for a thousand years. So, we, as long as we understand that, there's some clear instructions from Scripture on what we need to be doing. And in this particular verse, all every single word in here is very important. Um, but the main thing that I really want to focus in on today here is the renewing of your mind. Because we are constantly being bombarded with all kinds of thinking in ways that we should be thinking. And if you watch a lot of television, if you are very active on social medias, the, the variety of different social media, you are being targeted with programming and reprogramming and propaganda to come against your mind. And you may think everything is just fine, but unless you have a discerning spirit and you are constantly seeking uh, 
uh, your relationship and building your relationship with Christ and allowing the Holy Spirit to do a work in, in your life, you are not going to recognize some of these very subtle attacks against you and against your mind. So, I want to give you some information today that I, I believe is going to be very, very helpful to you. Um, one of the things that I like to do when I study the Word of God is I like to, to look at words and then look them up in the original language. And what's amazing about the New Testament, and same thing as the Old Testament, that whenever the apostle uh, or the writers of the New Testament would write certain words in Greek, that word could have you know, many different meanings. And when they would write it a certain way, it had a very specific meaning in mind. So, the word renewing, in particular, has, I believe, about four different meanings that it could be understood. But in this particular case, it's very specific. So, I want to, to help you with that. So, the word renewing in Greek, and I'm going to try my best to pronounce this, is anakonosis. And it, uh, you can find this in the Strong's Expository uh, Dictionary, and the number is 342. It basically means a renovation. So now I want you to think about, you move into your house and you're looking around, and what is the big thing today? People want to remodel their homes. They want to renovate their houses. They look at their kitchen and the cabinets are old and outdated. At least we think that they are. And the, the countertops, they're not granite. Everybody's got to have granite or marble or something fancy today. Uh, I personally don't understand that, but... Um, I think we should be satisfied with how the Lord has blessed us. And if you are able to get granite, then that's, that's wonderful. Uh, but people become very materialistic today. Um, and you look at, you know, everything else, the flooring in your house, and, and it's outdated, the carpet's torn, you need to remodel and up, do some upgrades. This is really the same word in the Greek. It's renovation. And it goes on to say this, when you take that word and you go a little deeper in the Greek and how the word is used and what is the full context and the understanding of that word, this is what it actually, what it actually says. It's a renovation. It is the adjustment of the moral and the spiritual vision and thinking to the mind of God. Wow! You think about that. That is absolutely amazing. So when you're renewing your mind, as the Apostle Paul says here, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he's saying that you're renewing it, you're doing a complete renovation. You're ripping out the old and putting in the new. Where it lines up with the perfect will of God. That is absolutely amazing. So folks, as you open yourself up to the world and the influences of the world, you are being bombarded, literally, if I could say it this way, you are being bombarded from the depths of the enemy of your soul from hell with all kinds of ungodly godly thoughts, um, thinking, um, you may just be th just you may be just outside one day and walking down the street, going for a walk in your neighborhood, and an ungodly thought comes in your head. That never comes from God. That comes from the enemy. So what do you do with those thoughts when they come here? You have got to immediately recognize that the enemy is attacking you and trying to get your mind off of the things of God and to start to go down a road that eventually will turn into a disaster. Uh, so you have to constantly be renewing your mind. I want to read uh, from the English Standard Version the same verse, Romans chapter 12 and this will actually be verse 2. 
This is what the Bible says. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now I want to read it to you in the New Living Translation, which I think is just is absolutely beautiful. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. I don't think I could say it any, any better than that. That is absolutely uh, beautiful, that the way that the New Living Translation brings that out. Folks, that's where every child of God needs to get. That we cast ourselves away from the world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. And we have got to constantly be renewing our mind in our Christian faith. It's very, very important. And if you're not doing that, uh, I really urge you that you've got to commit yourself to time with the Lord. And as I always say, pray and read. Read and pray. Pray and read and read and pray. And when you get tired of that, pray and read some more. And read and pray some more. So it's, it's you constantly get your mind on the things of God. As we get closer and closer to the Lord's return, the days will become more perilous, more wicked, more evil. And I was sitting with my wife last night, and we were watching, um, I believe it was the Andy Griffith show. And, the, and, and that's, a, that's a pretty clean show. And in the middle of that, when they went to a commercial, what comes on, even on that channel is a very ungodly commercial about transgender. And there's this individual that's dressing like a woman. He has physically changed body parts and is promoting transgenderism. And there was the very last thing that this person says is a propaganda message that comes straight from the pit of hell to change your mind about the way you think. And this is what I'm talking about, folks. This is the, these are the things we have to be have a discerning ear for, discerning eyes, and we got to understand what the truth of God's word is. This is what that person said. If you can see me, you can be me. Now that when you first hear it, you think, well, you know, okay, well, what's so bad about that? If you can see me, and this, what this person is saying, uh, and this is really the message. I was a man, now I'm a woman. I believe I'm a woman in here. And if you can see me in the state that I am, you also can be a transgender. That's really what the bottom line means. It's trying to get you to believe that being a transgender uh, is acceptable in this day and age. And it's not acceptable according to God's word. Uh, we are to love those individuals, their souls, pray for them and hope that they get saved. And if we have an opportunity to witness to them, we need to do that and try to win them to Christ so they can forsake that lifestyle and get right with God. Uh, but the Bible is very clear that uh, a man is a man and a woman is a woman. And it doesn't matter to me. Who says anything different about that? If the President of the United States says that that's acceptable, then he is a liar and a deceiver, and he's somebody I have no confidence in, and I will never listen to him. So I believe what the Word of God says, and that's it. If God's Word says it, that settles it for me. It doesn't matter. And now we have more and more preachers, even here in Atlanta, that are starting to conform to the world. And I would say if you're in one of those kind of churches, you need to find the exit and get out as fast as you can and come find a good 
godly pastor, Bible-believing church where you can get into it where they preach the Word of God. Praise, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to uh, read to you from Matthew. This is what Jesus said. The seed sowed, the seed sown among the thorns is the one who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. See, there's many things that we are being programmed to believe and to understand as acceptable, and it could, it could come in many different forms. And the desire for wealth in this nation, uh, that you are never a success unless you can have a lot of money and be successful with materialistic things, that again, my friend, listen to me, that is a lie straight from the pit of hell. So uh, I think that there are so many people, so many people in the church that have listened to Gnostic teachers, Gnostic teachers who have denied the truth of the Word of God, take a few scriptures, twist them, and deceive people to believing that in order for you to be a true child of God, you, you need to be wealthy. That is a lie. And that is not what Scripture teaches. So don't believe the deceptions that are out there. Again, we have to go back to renewing our mind, trusting God, staying on our knees, staying in the Word of God, and seeking God's will for our life. You better be renewing your mind on a daily basis, because if you're not thinking about the things of God, trust me, Satan wants to give you some thoughts to think about. He wants to implant in your mind uh, different things, and all of it is in complete adversity to God's will and His plan for your life. We need to be very, very careful. Jesus also said this in Mark chapter 4, verse 19, But the worries of this life, <clears throat> the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for other things come in and choke the word before it becomes unfruitful. So there's two places in the Gospels where Jesus talks about uh, the deceitfulness of wealth. And certainly <clears throat> if uh, you are a wealthy person and God has blessed you, and I know some very good godly Christians, uh, I go to church with uh, uh, a few of them, uh, and they have been very blessed financially, and they are very giving people, and they give to the cause of Christ, and they do it in a way where they don't want anybody to know about it, and that is the fruit. That is the, the fruit of righteousness. They will be. They will continue to be blessed by God because of their faithfulness to the Lord, and money never gets in their way. God has blessed them with the ability to make money, and they give to the cause and the work of God. And praise God for people like that. So folks, I want you to understand this, and I'm going to close here. It's very, very important that as we live over the next amount of time, whatever that is, and I believe that the Lord's coming back very, 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 very soon, but as we live in this world, we have got to be separate. We, we function, we do the things that we need to do, but we got to, to retract. We've got to back up from the world and not participate in anything that will change the way we think about eternity and about the things of God. I can't say it any plainer than that. And this is to all the nominal and the cardinal Christians out there that hopefully maybe you're watching this now. Uh, for you that are just straddling the fence, playing games with God, you go to church because it's something your grandmother did and your grandfather did, and you have no relationship with Christ. Time is running out. You better get right with God. You better have your own relationship with the Lord. 
because you cannot grab hold of the of the shirt tails of your past loved ones and because of their relationship with Christ you think you have a free pass to heaven it doesn't work that way you have to submit and you have to turn your life over to the Lord so where are you today is what I would I would ask you that question are you living a godly life as best you as you possibly can with the help of God are you are you giving your body as a living sacrifice is your mind and your thoughts consumed with the things of God or are you consumed with worldly things and things of this world that have nothing to do with eternity and they have no eternal value friends I would urge you and I would beseech you with everything that's within me cast those things aside they mean nothing but turn to the Lord and give him not 99.9 percent .9 of your life but give him 100 percent of everything that is within you trust the Lord renew your mind do a renovation in your mind remodel what's in here cast out all of the things of this world and don't let the world tell you how you need to live your life you trust God don't let any individual tell you that you need to be doing this or doing this unless it comes from the Word of God friends until next time may the Lord bless you may he protect you and watch over you and may he cause you to serve him with a pure loving heart in Jesus name amen